Hello, everyone. Welcome to day three of Indie 3. We actually have somehow survived to the third day of Indie 3. Um, so we've got so much to do. Uh, so many great games to show you guys. Uh, there's just a, there's hundreds of them. You guys have been sending in so many emails, and there's been so much going on. Uh, chat has been off the hook. Chat, you guys have been one of the most amazing things that any of us have ever seen. Uh, we keep getting the guys at Hitbox. They're like... Can we just have this chat all the time? Uh, you guys have been a very creative force, and it's been uh, completely inspiring to all of us over here. Uh, so big ups to you. We have the Game Jam. Uh, game Jolt's Game Jam has been amazing also. And the things that have been be being made over there, which we will be showing on, I believe, Monday? Sunday. Sunday is our big Game Jam show everything that was made there that we possibly can. Um... And you guys have been making amazing stuff, too. Uh, yesterday, we had a fantastic show. Uh, at one point, we pulled people from chat and formed an impromptu sound design, sound engineering panel that went amazing. Uh, M. Bojangles played and performed and inspired more people to perform, so we're going to have more performances tonight as well. Uh, Lana, Lana is playing tonight. Svetlana in the chat, she uh, has offered her services. And that's going to be amazing. So that's at 8 p.m. tonight. In an hour at 2 p.m., we have a panel that was going to be at Indy 4 on their side that we've moved over here because we have uh, Ted, the person who's running it live, here. And so he's going to come on this side of the screen, and we're going to go uh, talk about compassion and uh, design in game design. So it's going to be nonviolent compassion and pacifism design in games. Uh, and it has actually has a lot of echoes to do with the panel that we just had at Indy 4 an hour ago um, by the people at Pyrosaur, uh, sorry, uh, Pyrodactyl, Pyrodactyl Games. Um, and that was a fantastic panel if you weren't a part of that. A whole bunch more panels going on in Indy 4. And right now, we're going to get into some more games. We're going to get into a trailer showcase like we've been doing. This has been our, our mainstay, and it's been an amazing engagement to be able to show you guys some trailers for games that... Uh, usually wouldn't be seen. The, this is kind of this is the E3 that we always dream of, um, and so that's how like that's that's what I love doing, and I love being able to support all of you guys. So, without further ado, let's hit a trailer. So that is Pseudo Rossi's uh, Still Free. And as you saw in the hashtag, it was a part of the previous game jam that just happened, the Space Cowboy game jam. And you could tell by the little plinkling of the uh, guitar in the background and this whole kind of space motif. Um, well, Pseudo Rossi actually gave us a couple other things. Uh, there was one other screenshot that they wanted to show us. Um, oh, if I can just pull that up and just... Be nice to me. Google Chrome, please. Oh, okay, so Google Chrome has decided to just have a meltdown. That's okay. Um, there we go. Hit that. Hit that up, if you would. Um, so this is just a, a straight-up screenshot of the game in the Unity engine. Uh, but the more important thing, the one that, the thing that Pseudo Rossi uh, wanted to point out was this little orb in the back. Um, I believe they call that a moon. And they said that uh, we are standing right here and that you can also stand right there. And that this is something that is free on uh, itch.io. So uh, right there, pseudorossi.itch.io. Uh, you can find all of their games right there. Um, and still free is, you can download it right now. You can ask your own price. And the ask your own price model has been something that uh, has been very, very helpful to a lot of devs. Um, 
I mean, I know that uh, TJ is actually not with us right now because he's on a bus, but he managed to pay for that bus because someone bought Joy Lancer last, last night. So, hooray! <laughs> Thanks for getting TJ to go home and get some actual... He had got a change of clothes for the first time in three days. So, that's awesome. Thanks for buying Joy Lancer, you guys. That was super helpful. Um, so, Still Free also by Suda Rossi is... Um, Another game that you can buy for your own price, and uh, whatever you think that it's worth, you can uh, retro or post pay for it as well, which has been something that's just been a huge help to a lot of devs, and it means a lot to all of us here. So, um, going on one more step, there's another one, uh, same developer in collaboration with another great developer, Hoodie Specs. Uh, this is called From Whence It Came. That's for, from whence it came, also by Sudo Rossi. Um, you, what I really love about this proliferation of uh, that kind of creative mode of play, uh, where game, devel game developers basically give you the uh, level design tools and say, have some fun, is it kind of recreates that feeling uh, to an, un an infinite amount. Um, it's like, all right, here's your box of Legos. You can just pour them out all over the floor and you can spread them about and bathe in them, uh, whatever you like to do with your box of Legos. Um, but you have all of your pieces. You have your little 4x2 block that you use for almost everything. Now let's have infinite number of those. And you can get any one you want. You don't even have to look through your box of Legos for the exact right piece. It's just right there and you've got it. Um, yeah, no, From Whence It Came has that... Uh, the, those level design bits in it where um, you have the power to basically make your own zombie survival base and then uh, do with it what you will. Uh, whether you want it to be something that will help you defend against the zombies or make it harder for you to defend against the zombies, um, it's completely up to you. So, like, uh, the cool thing about that is that the, the zombies and the guns are actually taking a really big back seat. Those are just the basic forces of the game. The bigger thing is, what are you going to do with the world around you? That's the bigger question. And that's something that's really, really cool. That's amazing. Um, to find more info on that game from whence it came, let me grab the about. Um, that was uh, bit.ly slash FWIC game. So from whence it came, acronymized game. It's affixed on the end. Um, so yeah, that was Sudo, that was Sudo Rossi's other game. Um, some really cool stuff happening in there. Uh, so I've got another game here that uh, is very sassy, and I want to show you guys a very sassy game 
This is called Greenlight Simulator 2015, and it is exactly how it sounds. Developer can there we go. Got it. The life of an indie developer can be hard, especially when that indie developer is a rhino. Meet Sarah, an aspiring indie who wants nothing more than to get her game through Steam Greenlight. And along the way, she just might find out the true meaning of video games. From the creators of Candy Butt Poop Game, Greenlight Simulator 2015, coming this summer, probably. So, Greenlight Simulator 2015, that's on Greenlight, and <laughs> is just a very, a very sassy game. It, it is, uh, I don't want to say juvenile as a way to diminish, like, youth, but it's, it's just playfully juvenile in a very fun way. So, I look forward to the creators of Candy Butt Poop Game making Greenlight Simulator 2015. I just think that's a, it's so swell. It's so silly. Um... And it actually seems like uh, just kind of that way that it's scrapped together. I mean, for all we know, it might not even be a real game. Or if it is, maybe we're already playing it. So that's the truth right there. Um, either way, it is uh, kind of putting in a critical aspect to the uh, democratic process of green light, or at least how it is usually designed, um, where uh, the green light process is where the people have the power to put the games on Steam, as opposed to Steam being the uh, curatorial and authorial force on everything that comes and goes on Steam. Um, so to see Greenlight Simulator up there is just very silly. Uh, also poking fun, of course, at the long list of simulator games that also show up on Steam's platform. Uh, so it just seems like a, a natural fit to be a nice parody of uh, Steam's, uh, Steam's library of games. Um, Okay, so this is a game that I'm not sure if you guys have seen yet. and oh, I guess that's kind of an understatement of the entire show. Um, <laughs> this is a game I'm not sure if you guys have seen yet, because I'm not sure if TJ showed this last night, because I saw the thing up. But I wanted to show it off, um, because it sounds just really, really cool. So hit me up on this side. This is called Drew and the Floating Labyrinth. And this is the site for the PC, Mac, and Linux game. It is a hand-drawn third-person puzzle platformer for Mac, PC, and Linux. Control Drew, a lost young girl, trying to find her way back home through a series of abstract levels requiring you to use clues and environment to find invisible paths, gaining color to her black and white character as you progress. Okay, cool. So the, uh, the world is going to be reflecting on to Drew as, as she progresses through the levels. Um, most importantly, I think this is something that they wanted to really flesh out. Um, oh, good, there's videos. I actually... Didn't check this earlier. Uh, but it's all hand-drawn. So uh, instead of going through digital services to create um, a unique... Where is... Oh, it's down here more. Okay. There we go. Um, we'll see how this turns out right here, of course. But uh, I'm interested in seeing how it uh, invokes the digital aspect of drawing on paper. happening in two months oh my gosh that's drew in the floating labyrinth everyone please go up green light do the thingy with the stuff for drew and uh drew in the floating labyrinth wow 
holy smokes, that went way beyond anything that I was expecting. <laughs> um, but oh, there's just so many, there's so many facets and details in there. Uh, you have, you, you are kind of just feeling out the way around you uh, and trying to create the, trying to blindly find this correct path. Uh, and that's just so, so powerful with how, how they're doing it. Uh, one of the little subtle details that I wanted to point out was that the uh, character, obviously the character is hand-drawn, and they're doing looping uh, stills of each face of the character. Um, and then that sprite changes depending on where the camera is in relation to the object character um, to create the look of uh, angled sides of what is essentially a flat character on a plane. Uh, and that's that's brilliant. So they have a moving image of the face on, a moving image of uh, 30 degrees to the left and all the way around, and it just looks so flawless. It looks gorgeous. Uh, and coming back to that idea of uh, how they're going to be using uh, drawn medium to evoke stuff in a digital space, uh, that's, that's actually way more literally what I was expecting was uh, going to happen. Uh, but it's actually just literally drew the 2D flat character in a giant 3D space. Uh, very well executed and amazing, and I can't wait to see what else can come from that. Uh, from whence it, uh, sorry, uh, Drew in the Floating Labyrinth is on green light, and you can find more information at drew.fromdustscratch.com. Um, but yeah, that's just absolutely phenomenal. Okay, so, uh, we've got one more... A uh, whole nother trailer. It's called Sports Ball. Sports Ball 2014. And. That's uh, that's 2DX's sports ball. Wow. Okay. So straight up, uh, we've got one hell of a crazy Joust game. Uh, joust, the old old uh, arcade game. Um, lots of uh, really great things in there. Uh, so uh, with sports ball, sports ball, obviously uh, the main interaction is what do you do on this side of the screen? Um, you have the sports ball game itself that is much more of an artifact to. Uh, harbor engagement over here on the like playing video game side of things uh, and that was very apparent in the trailer the trailer was well put together with its own 80s style soundtrack about sports ball uh, so yeah just really cool stuff happening in that trailer and uh, there is a second one but I think uh, you guys looked at this yesterday from what I'm, I'm being told TJ just got here so everyone give love to TJ hey. uh, so Good. I'm glad that we could show that off twice then. Uh, doing that multiple times is not a bad thing for this thing. Um, cool. So, what is our next game? Has some stuff going on. Oh, uh, this is Green Alien Bits. Right. Sweet. Uh, so, let me show you guys Green Alien Bits.
I know he was back this morning. Oh. So that was Green Alien Bits uh, by Games by D and DK. Uh, sorry, Games by D and K. So you can find games at dnk.com. And uh, yeah, that was Green Alien Bits. So you're going to be taking control of Jimmy the Alien. And at the beginning of each scene, you'll be transported to the ground, immediately followed by a barrage of missiles and bombs. Sent to your direction by the human military, your goal is to survive every wave of attack in your search for the princess. Um, and it also comes with, uh, like many kind of games uh, at this level do, it comes with a create your own levels thing. And an, a place, a space where you can share all of your creations with others. And that's a super powerful tool that people use to share their games and kind of build a community. Very cool. Very awesome. Um, also, I think if my... I'm trying to get chat open, and I think that my chat might be just straight up frozen. Um, but if November Niner Niner is in chat, I wanted to just shout them out because they are uh, they're the people working with Sudorosu from uh, on From Whence It Came. And so I wanted to give them love if they were there, but I don't know if my chat is actually live or if that's just some really old stuff. Um, woo! Okay, this is a this is a game that actually has some really, really cool stuff underneath it that I wanted to look at. Um, I'm trying to grab you guys the dev's name so you can look this up really easy. Um, oh, Mastertronic. Mastertronic. So this is from Mastertronic, and it's called Concursion. And let's hook it up for y'all. So, Concursion, that is a game that is on Steam right now, um, and is it, like, oh, it's ready, it's already done, it's done, you got it. Uh, if you want to go pick this up right now, it just went on sale, it is 20% off on Steam, and basically, I mean, you kind of see what's going on here, right? We're exploring all the different ways that we can uh, do 2D platforming, um, or at least all the ways that it has been explored currently, and trying to compress that all into a single play space. And uh, it's done very, very elegantly, where you have um, your jumping, and then you have a single extra button that does your kind of interactability. So uh, you have sometimes you are playing the role of the spaceship that's shooting straight ahead. Sometimes you are jumping. Um, other times you are, uh, oh gosh, there's so many different roles that you're playing in this game. Um, but you're switching between these spaces completely based on what is in the background uh, and foreground, there's a little bit of stuff. I think there's an RPG version of it, too, in there. Um, but there's so many different roles that you're taking in one space. Um, and it's really cool. You get to play as this person who gets to be all of the heroes at once. And I think that that's something that really kind of draws people into this sort of space. Um, oh, by winningism. Hello. Shout out to them. Uh, Biwi was, did an amazing panel on the Indie 4 side. Um, all of our panelists have been amazing, and everyone who's been doing this on such short notice has been so impressive and means so much to me that they were able to help 
Um, and really just to just everyone's kind of put themselves out there in a very uh, physical and emotional way. Um, and so I need to just give everyone give huge thanks to by winningism for helping with the panel that she was on. Um, they did an amazing panel about streamers and relationships and how it is actually being a streamer and being a real life person and all of these kinds of things, the very human side of it that we all struggle with every day. Um, and so big props to them. Um, but also go buy Concursion on Steam. Please do. It's radical. And a very nice trailer. Yeah, TJ wanted to mention that. It's just a nice trailer. Uh, I'm going to put that one... Where are we at for time? Oh, oh, we're actually very far ahead of time. Uh, for once, I don't think I've ever been this far ahead of time. Um, so I want to show you guys another trailer. This is a cyberpunk hacking game for the Oculus Rift called Dark ha uh, Darknet. So that was Darknet. We're breaking through firewalls, we're retrieving data, doing it upright. Most importantly, you are doing it uh, very physically with your body um, and getting your body into it, which I've always thought is the coolest part of the Oculus Rift. It's, it's not even just that uh, the screen is much closer to your face, but that is uh, your neck and body is controlling it. That's just a, such a cool exploration of the body as control device. Um, and I think that that's exactly what Darknet is getting into with this kind of game, is that they want to put your whole body into the experience of hacking, or uh, this idealized experience of hacking and taking control of a system. And so that's really well put together. And I love the trailer for it. It's just so adorable. Um, but they have the site, uh, darknetgame.com. Oh, and uh, Akis... Uh, I can never pronounce your name right, but I love that you're here. Akisterson uh, says they're cheap, too. They're cheap, too. Uh, can't argue with that. Um, so one of the, the last games that we had for this uh, set is Palisade Runner, and this is on itch.io. Uh, if you mind throwing it over there. Thank you. Um, yeah, sorry. He's waiting for me to put up videos, and I'm like, too bad. Um Oh, we actually do have a trailer. Excuse me. Um, but here's some screenshots real quick of Palisade Runner. And uh, they have a flash demo right there on the page at xhunterco.itch.io. And I want to make sure I give love to their video.
Palisade Runner. That was Palisade Runner, and uh, I just want to give a shout out to all the people who have made trailers for Indie Three Jam, uh, and for Indie Three. Uh, even like what they did there in that trailer specifically was they put music and words to their screenshots uh, that really did evoke exactly what they were trying to say with the game. Um, and that even that step is very, very important. And I'm really happy that we can put these things together for the people. That way you guys can just keep making games, right? Uh, you don't have to spend all your resources and time and energy advertising your game um, when you can string some screenshots together and put some really great music behind it. Uh, super helpful. And uh, I want to hype up Palisade Runner because I really like their interactions between uh, you're kind of doing this base defense thing where you're doing your resource management, uh, trying to make sure that you don't go under monetarily with your base and that you have the resources to keep building this against an onslaught of enemies. But then also on top of that, also uh, thrive is the word that they used. And it's probably a really great word but continue growing and growing in a way that reflects your own identity and reflects your own thoughts and dreams about what you want your Palisade Runner base to be. And I think that's very important and very cool that they want to look at the other side of uh, survival as hopefully survival can become a way for us to become sustainable. And then once we're sustainable, we can thrive and have our own expression and creativity and that's really awesome. That's amazing. I love I I love that aspect of it that they're putting there. Um, so I have uh, one more game uh, because I didn't realize I'd, I haven't been running through these as quickly as I did, but I guess I got through them. But it actually gives us the perfect amount of time to set up for our panel too. Um, never mind. I planned this. Excuse me. This has been perfectly executed. Uh, <laughs> I have uh, one more. This one's actually a game. Uh, it doesn't have a trailer with it, but it's a very very short game and very quick, and I can show it to you, and then you guys can play it during the break, and that's probably the best part. Uh, but this is Eric Hermit's uh, Luminux. And wait, I've actually already failed to load the uh, data file. <laughs> Technical difficulties. Uh, if we could just run Unity, run Java, that would be helpful. Um, in the meantime, we're about to set up for a panel on, um, on compassion and pacifism pacifist themes in games and game design, how to design a game in that sort of way. And that is going to be up in 15 minutes with Ted Lee. And I believe we have uh, Eniko, Enico, Enichan, and Joe Parlock. And so that's going to be really, really awesome. And I'm very excited to be able to help host that here. hey -o! Luminux hitting us up for real. I can just. Uh oh. Live demos, everyone. There we go. Took a couple. It just needed a little love. Lumi systems. We're going to enter the Lumi system. A dying star system. Fusing lumens will create energy to sustain it. So, this is a tile puzzle game. This is a puzzle sliding game. And I believe. Am I using the mouse to do this? Or. I actually. Don't remember. Let's see if we've got. Um, it's not arrow keys and it's not WASD but is it a oh it's a click and drag right this is an iOS game I should be looking at that no stop 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 it no ah okay we we have had a cosmic meltdown we have reached fail state oh and there we go Let's try again. Now that we know, we're clicking and dragging because it's supposed to be an iOS style game, so you would replace the mouse with the finger. And I believe it's in the style of a match three, right? Bam! Uh-oh, I'm already messing everything up. There we go. What you got, Eric Hermit? Oh, I can push other blocks into each other too. All right, get in there. Let's see if we can get four. Or five? Come on. Bam! Oh, this would be so much easier if I wasn't using a trackpad. <laughs> but hey, we work within the limitations we're given and try to thrive. 
Let's give it one more. Nice. I believe... Am I leveling up too in this? Or is there some kind of progression style thing? I know it's definitely getting faster. And you can play with this kind of like idea of canceling out the blocks, which is cool. And then we'll get overwhelmed. No, don't step to me. No, we're not uh, we're not giving up for sure. There we go. I think I'm actually getting better at this. Oh. No, I'm not. Spoilers, I'm the worst at video games. Uh, unequivocally terrible. Whoa! Okay, never mind. Apparently I'm the best. I'm actually uh Oh god, it's getting much faster. So yeah, that is Luminux. Uh, <laughs> that is erichermit.itch.io uh, backslash Luminux. And it, you can just play it right now. Uh, but it's also on the App Store on iOS and on Android. And so you can get that right now and cause your own cosmic meltdown. Um, thank you guys for watching this very first, today's Day 3's first look at uh, a bunch of indie game trailers and... Uh, things we're going to be right back in a very short amount of time to host a panel discussion about uh, themes of uh, nonviolence in games. God, beat me up. No. All right. What's up, guys? How you guys doing in chat? Svetlana, what up? You're gonna be performing tonight. If you'd like to uh, beat me up, James. Uh. Say what? Uh, we're done. Oh. Cue to credits. Thank you, guys. <laughs>